All right, so we're back to get the rest of your problems in. We got three more. So let's look at seven, three, number four. So true false test has 140 questions, passing grade is 63% or more uh, correct answers. What is the probability a person will guess correctly on one true false question? So you just talking about the probability that a person will guess correctly it should be 50%, right? On one true false question, it should be 50%. 0. 0.5, yep. Probability that a person will guess incorrectly on one. Once again, 0. 0.5, because it's just true or false. All right. Approximation, who passed the test? Use a normal approximation. Probability. Who is just guessing what passed the test is? 20.63. All right, so yeah. For a similar test, we're given multiple choice. Four question lead, approximately like this. All right, so let's go with the notes. We'll go to the notes. All right, so let's go here. We know that um, P hat is 0. 0.63%, 63%, 63%. P is 0. 0.5. We need our standard error. P times one minus P over N square root of that. So that's 0. 0.5, one minus 0. 0.5. And what was, we got 140 questions. So we'll look at that. So that's going to be point zero fourteen. All right, then we need our z score. So that's p hat minus p all over s e. So p hat was point six three point five point zero four two two six. Okay, 3.08, got me a high number. It was 0.63. Yep. Okay. So we hit the chart. So I got 3.0 and then 0.8. This is what I have right here 0.9990. And then we're talking about passing these 0.63 or more. And more than we always gonna subtract the chart value from one. So let's see, one minus 0.9990. Yep, just making sure 
Let's see if that's saying so that math lab once. Yep, that was good. All right, if it's similar to the test, give him multiple choice question for which question? Probability would be all right. So let you know, I'll show you this right here. So, if a similar test were given with multiple choice questions, with four choices for each question, would the approximate probability passing the test by guessing be higher or lower than the approximate probability? A passing test were true, false, and why? It would be lower because the probability of guessing correctly on each question is lower when there are four options. So, you know, remember we had a 50% chance, right or wrong, true or false, but then we have four options, A, B, C, D. Now you have a 25% chance of guessing right because you got four options instead of just two options. So that's why your probability would be lower because there, there are more options. All right. So that's seven, three, number four. Yeah, you put me to work today. So we got uh, two more and then we'll be good. So seven, four, number two. All right, in a simple random of 1,100 young people, 89% had earned a high school diploma. What is the standard error for this estimate percentage? People earned their high school diploma. Okay. So we have a random sample of 1,100 young people. 89% earned a diploma. Okay, now this is actually P hat because it's 89% of that sample. We're not talking about 89% of the population. If it was 89% of the population, then that would be P. This is P hat. So now they ask us to find the standard error for this estimate. So same thing though, we're gonna use P hat. When you don't have P, we use P hat. And we use it the same way we did P. 3.89. Minus 0.89 divided by 1100 to the square root of that. So I am getting 0 0.00943. Let's see how many decimal places they want. They want four decimal places for 0 0.0094. All right. Now the margin of error with a 95% confidence level. <clears throat> Excuse me. Seven, four. Okay, so this goes back to show you the margin of error. Here's my chart. So we're gonna have to use, you know, one of these, and that'll let us know what to use here. So the margin of error. Is this calculation right here. We can take our sample uh, error estimate, which is what we just found, 
and multiply it to, it says 95%, I've already got a circle, 95% confidence interval, which is 1.96. So if they wanted the 90% confidence error, error uh, confidence level, we would use 1.645. If you wanted 80%, we use 1.28. 99%, 2.58. But we're using 1.96 here because we wanted a 95% confidence level. All right. So 95%. Let's do it like this. It's called Z, or Z asterisk is 1.96. Margin of error is your SE, and that's what this actually is, the estimate, because we had to use P hat instead of P, um, times, times that Z asterisk. So it's 0 0.00943 times 1.96. Point zero one eight four eight. See how many decimal places they want. Oh, so convert it to a percentage. That's one point eight four eight percent, and they want it at one decimal place. So it should be one point eight percent. All right. Confidence in a rule for the percentage. So that should be adding. So to get your confidence interval, um, go another color, let's go red. It's gonna be P hat plus or minus your margin of error. And that comes back to here. P hat plus or minus your confidence, or margin of error, excuse me. So that's going to be 89%. Where are we at? Where are we at? Yep, 89%. Plus or minus Mm -hmm. So we got 87.2%, 90.8%. Let me throw it in my lab, make sure we are good. 90.2, All right, suppose that the pairs 80% of you. All right, so let me show you this last one, last question. Suppose that in the past 80% of all young people earned high school diplomas, does this confidence interval you found in Part C support or refute that claim that the percentage of young people who earn high school diplomas have increased? So the interval supports this claim because 80% is not in, interval, not in the interval and all values are above 80%. So everything has increased. You know, this interval has increased uh, compared to what was done in the past. So if 80% was still in the interval, then it wouldn't support a claim because, you know, we're still there. But 80% is in the past, and now the confidence interval is 87 to 90. So that's why the interval supports the claim. And that's because 80% is not in an interval. All the values are above 80%. All right. So... Last one, seven, four, number three. So very similar to what we just did, um, but they give you the information differently. So the last one, they gave you 89% SP hat. This time they gave you how many out of your sample fits that 
um, characteristics. So let's let me go ahead and show you just to make sure you understand what I'm saying. Instead of giving you the percentage, they gave you the number out of it so that we can find a percentage ourselves. Excuse me. So give me 427, 1004. Okay, so we got 427, 1004. So P hat is gonna be that 427 over the 1004. You know, if you wrote the formula. Why is this not erasing? X over N. And that's 427 over 1004. 0.425 two, let's go three. Let's see they want in percentage. No, round to three decimal places. 0.4253. Hold on, did I write something wrong? 427 divided by 1004. You said that Pope asked me on whether closing logo would hurt certain likes. Said it would hurt a lot. So I see. Oh, round of three decimal places. I thought I said four. Okay, my bad. Three decimal places. All right. So let's look at the next one. Find a confidence interval 95%. So we have to go through that process that we just did in the last one, 95% confidence interval. So first thing we need to do is to find our SE. And this is going to be our SE estimate because we don't have the actual proportion of the population. So we got to do P hat. So 0.425 minus 1 divided by 1. So the SE is 0 0.015601. And then to find the Z score, no, we're not doing that. We don't need a Z score. So we got 0 0.5, and now we need a margin of error. Let me do this. We're looking for a 95% confidence interval. So it means we're doing 1.96 again. Let me make sure we're doing 95%. Yep, 1.96 again. Then we're looking for the margin of error, which is your SE estimate times Z asterisk. Remember, this is Z asterisk right here. So that's 0 0.015601 times 1.96. So it's going to be 0 0.01497. Okay. So we're going to take P hat to find a confidence interval. This time they wanted a decimal value. Last time they wanted a percent. And they tell us to round to how many decimal places? Still three. So we have 0 0.425. Plus or minus 0 0.014. Go ahead and round it to five since we're doing three decimal places. Of course, once again, this is this right here. Just round it to three decimal places. So 0 0.425 minus 0 0.015. 0 0.425 plus. 0 0.5, 0 0.15. Mm -hmm. So 0.41 in here. Point four four. All right, so let's see if that's what Math Lab is okay with.
All right, so let's see here. I'm all by some decimal places. Let's see where I may have went wrong. Let's go here, 0.425 minus. Unless I go back here. Oh, that shouldn't have been it. Hold up, I think I might have messed up right there. Hold on. Next. All right, do that one. All right, so take the square root of that. All right, hold on one more time. This is why it pays to have your actual calculator that you like to use. Okay, so that's right. Then times that by 1.96. Oh, that's it. Somehow I got this wrong. Now let's see if that makes the difference. It should, I mean, not if it makes a difference, that most definitely will make a difference. 145. And that gives me 394. So, yep, that's it right there. So I messed up on calculating this part. I don't know how that happened. That was an easier calculation, but it's not land. It's not like I'm doing it by hand, but you know, that's how it happens sometimes. So 0.425 minus 0 0.030 for me. Yeah, so got to put Okay, let's see what the next step is. So then they ask you about a 80% confidence interval. So this time your confidence interval, not 88. That means your C asterisk is going to be one point two eight. And so you need M, which is P hat, not P hat, um, standard error times that. So 0 0.015601 times 1.28. Going to be 0.1997. So now I'm going to add that plus or minus that to that p hat that I had, which was 0.425. So subtracting and adding it, should get 0.225 here. Six two four seven. 
and make sure my numbers are right. Uh huh, and I left off a zero. I thought that was too funny compared to what we have been doing. Should be a zero right here. Let's go change that. All right, so point four zero five four four five. Let's see if we're good to go. Point zero five point four four five. So Those Y, those Y. Equity. All right, so for the last one, 95 says which interval is wider and wider? 95% interval is wider. To get a higher degree of certainty, the interval needs to be wide. So, all right, so there you go. There are your problems. I'll send you both videos in a few. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.